Well, starting any radial engine, whether it be on a Beaver Otter or DC-3, Beechcraft. Yeah. The a star is just touching down at the Forester pad off of your departure end. Uh, well clear. Left turn up. Wind 15, 0 to 11, clear takeoff from way to it. Yeah, we're clear to go for Trail 1. Okay, what I want. I think back uh, to the young co-pilot you talked about. Like a young co-pilot getting in an airplane like I did when I got in. You know, you'll fly with uh, different captains and different captains will tell you different things and show you different things. You gotta take from five coaches what they teach you, the best of each person, and that molds who you are. So, like uh, Harry Burfield, he taught me all about the airplane. He, he knew the mechanical part of this airplane. He knew how this airplane worked mechanically. He taught me that. Um, Danny Breeze taught me how to fly under instruments. He showed me how, how to handle this airplane. I took that from him. Joe Langwa, he showed me how to land in a dark, dirty strip going uphill, downhill, crosswind, uphill. He could land the airplane physically. He taught me to physically fly the airplane. To take a guy like George Landry, he taught me more about uh, ADF flying and tracking and, and tracking an ADF across the Arctic and the dual line. So to those guys, I say thank you because I hopefully the young guys that fly with me I'll take one fifth from me, some from Jeff, some from AJ, a little bit from Ian, and that's who they will become if they want to become a flyer. If they want to become a pilot, it's stamped on a piece of paper, you're a pilot, they'll hand it to you, and now I'm a pilot. No, you got to go learn to fly the airplane. 44 inches on top of the throttle. Okay. And and Roger. And if we have a failure before 80, I'll abort after 80. Uh, which is uh, 8085, which is our B1, B2, rotate. After that, if we have a failure, I will I will identify it, you will verify it, and we'll see what runway we're going to land on, uh, what side it is. Understood. Yeah. Our clearance is still valid. Clearance still valid. Just past southwest of Frank's channel there. Roger that. Thank you so much for the help. Very good. Talk to you later. And our uh, trainer runs rolling now, 28. Hey, trailer, or correction, Buffalo, turn to one, Roger. Hey, trailer gills. And gills are going through. Hey, tail was locked. Gills are on floor. Check our time. Got your watch on. Check your, how much time we got. It's, it's like a dance, you know. You're, you're stepping one way and the airplane's coming back to, to greet you. Hey, airspeed's alive. Oh, so give me 44 inches. 44 inches. Bottle to yards. My throttles. 44 inches, sit. Airplane's flying. Traffic. Traffic. Everything looking good. Gear up. Now you want to hold these throttles. Standing up here. Just hold the throttles. I'll hold the throttle. Oh, you know, stand it up. Uh, pull it straight back. No, oh, this one. Pull this one. Oh, yeah. John or Wayne. All right. Can I leave the screen? No, better go. No. Okay. 32 inches. 32 inches. Line up one second. That's what you're sure. Because I remember very, very vividly the, my first few flights, first quite a few flights, as a pilot in training. And uh, I look at these guys and say, oh, uh, there I was. Okay, check that. Oh, yeah, I'll up. See in the mirror. Can you try one in the just west? Oh, yeah, we'll go ahead. Is he here to fly a DC-3 or is he here to just fly an airplane and get his 1,500 hours? And, be on his way. So you can tell very quickly whether or not they want to fly the airplane or whether they just want to build hours. If they want to fly the airplane properly and, and they have an interest in it, then you work with them and you make sure that you let them do as much as they can with the airplane to learn the airplane, to learn the physical flying of the airplane. There's many reasons that they're here and you, as soon as you figure out why they're here, you'll distinguish um, how well they fly the airplane. He's, he's probably 21 or less. He, he's probably uh, uh, pretty hungry. It's his first time away from home, and, and I'm not his mother, so I ain't going to feed him. And other than that, he, um, he, he's sitting there like a, a new kid on the block, 
all chomping at the bit and getting ready to go, and um, I really enjoy the enthusiasm. Okay, so we got everything done here on the cruise yeah, check. Cruise checks are complete. A DC-3 is a physical flying airplane, like hands and feet, they call it, you know, there's good coordination with his hands and feet. His cutout for the, for the airplane is really his, his enthusiasm to fly it. Okay, is it clear and nice, nice and clean out there, that engine? Yeah, engine. Clear and clean? Clear and clear. Stage the wheel there, see how it leads itself in a nice rate one turn all the way around. The airplane really wants to fly itself. Yeah. We're just as long as the security guard work. The airplane will fly very well on its own. If this airplane ever gets in trouble, it's because somebody is too trouble into it. Like a pilot. So there's Yell Night Bay ahead of us. In an hour, I'll be out with an N3N on floats. And Trainer 1, we'd like to go. Oh, we held both bay towards Con Mine, then set up for, I'd like to be able to do a right hand on the one way, one zero, beautiful stuff. So, Trainer 1, clear is requested from Con, when you're ready, clear right downwind to runway one zero. Um, you'll be two at the field, there's a 37, will be landing on 16 ahead, he is, so I'll advise the base turn once you're in the downwind there. Okay, Trainer 1, check the monitor. Yeah, if you want to experience flight at all, you can sit on the beach at night with your beer and your Export A and watch the seagulls fly around. And eagle just flew by and I waved at it. He was flying better than I am. I always like those eagles, especially those uh, the seagulls too. They can always fly better than us. The closest thing you can you can get to that flight at the, with a DC-3. We can't go anywhere close to what they're doing, but it's the closest we can get in our in our parameters. So there's Con Mine, Consolidated Mining and Smelting. It's all been reclaimed now. It was a lot of gold, too. Come from a family of mining people, and of course we went from camp to camp looking for that elusive gold. So uh, I had a lot of uh, experience riding around in airplanes, and when I got to the city to go to school, I rode a lot more in airplanes than I ever rode in cars, I know that. And out to the north here is uh, Dead Village. One thing you gotta remember, by DC-3 the rest of your life, this picture frame here. You'll see it every day, every day will be different. So every day a different picture, different cloud formation, different water, different wind, different lighting, moonlight, sunlight, star bright. So every day you look out this window, you'll see a new world. Well, an instrument panel on a DC-3, of course, is 54 inches. When, they, uh, when God made man, he made us with 54 inch peripheral vision. So if we sit properly and look right, we can see the whole instrument panel within our vision, and uh, what you're really watching is is um, is just everything. There's all the gauges, uh, temps and pressures, navigation, um, you know, the the heading, the compass, the navigation of the airplane, and the condition of it. You're watching the whole thing all at once, and you're absorbing it all and putting it back into into the movements that as you fly the airplane. So this is the windshield here is worth millions of dollars view. In fact, it's not, doesn't have a price on it, it's just priceless. That's why they made it square like this, we can see, and if we don't get a big picture, then we get the little picture. So we got two here, left and big and small. Well, I've looked out that window for a lifetime, I've never seen the, the world the same out there. Now the thing is now, within a couple of minutes, we got to take this whole ass of ours down to the ground and land and get back into the worldly problems. But while we're up here, we're free. Yeah. So this, yeah, but it looks like I'm downwind now, right hand, yeah? Yeah, sure. So you notice as we roll down the runway, the old girl put her tail up in the air and her wings got light. 30 seconds later, all the world problems left behind us. Yeah. See all those worldly down there, all those earthly people? They're all having headaches down there, not us. Okay, what we'll do now is I'll get you to put the wheels down and do a landing check. Now, to put the wheels down, I'm going to clear it up like this. All right. Then I want you to put it straight down, just like that. You'll put your feet on the pedals, you'll feel the wheels lock in, the gear lock in. You'll see a big Dunlop hanging out down there, a big black Dunlop. 
You see it? Yeah. Can we open our window to see it too? Yeah. Like, can you? Okay, she's down and locked. Pressure's up. Idle's green. Lights green. Landing check's complete. Okay, one flap, one down, back to neutral. Well, the landing of the DC-3, really, if you think of it, is the exact reversal of a takeoff. You start at zero, accelerate up. A landing, you're just absolutely reversing that. You're coming back in and you're reversing everything you did when you took off until you, you come to a stop where you started. Clear the land, runway one zero. Third land, we're clear one. Okay, there we're over the horse farm. Horses down there. Now we're coming up on the... Uh, all night, uh, golf course. I don't take three flat. Three seven. And now we're coming on final. The last 200 feet. Now we'll take the fourth flat. And take two turns off on my tension, throttle tension. Turn. Yep. Yep, that's good. Final check, you got light? Yep, lights. Final check. All checks are done. Checks are complete. Okay, now what we can do is look down and pull a flap. Pull flaps up. Yep. Alpha flaps coming up. Tails coming down. Flaps are up. Bring back to neutral. Okay, now. Of course, many people ask that it's uh, the DC-3. It lasts as long as it has because it was um, it was. It was meant to be. It, it's one of those happenings. It, it wasn't. Uh, it just. It built so strong and, and so well, and so well engineered and designed that uh, yeah, it'll last forever. Turn Taylor. It's How's my wing tip there? Wing tip is clear of. Clear good? Good, good. I'd just like to say thank you to all the people that made this possible for me to, to spend a lifetime flying a DC-3, the, the people that have maintained it, uh, the Dave McLennans who came along and, and trained uh, Rod and Ronnie and the new generation how to maintain the, the airplane so I could fly it. Okay, double check geometrically, everything's off. Go geometric like you're going around the world. Especially, you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and say, did I turn that master off or didn't I? It's off. Mags are off. Flashes of light paint the sky and burn it out in the bowl rush. Before you tow it, sure, kick your brakes off, okay? See, when you hear that noise, that jar is not going to be long for this world. This one right here. Feel it? Yeah. I also like to, to thank the people that used the airplane so I had a customer base so I could afford to, to make a living flying the airplane. And I'd like to just thank those people that, uh, you know, supported it. Yeah, well, the, first, the people that join us for uh, a ride to DC-3, I'd uh, certainly thank you for watching and coming in with us. And if you ever get the all night, you know where we are. We've got the playhouse with the big blue playhouse here. Come over and see us. I would fight for you if I
Somewhere we will start.